The following segments are pre-recorded and sponsored by Longworth Productions. Visiting Urgent Care on Try It Today. Hello everyone, I'm Jim Longworth and welcome to another edition of Try It Today, coming to you from the beautiful Senior Botanical Garden in Kernersville. We'll tell you more about them later on. And later on is when the roundtable shows up and we will get into all sorts of controversial things. But between now and then, some great guests, important information coming your way, including the discussion about going to urgent care. Much more coming your way. Where we want to start, though, is with a familiar topic, but you can't talk about it too much, with our good friend, Eric Aft, who's CEO of Second Harvest Food Bank of Northwest North Carolina. Welcome back, sir. Jim, it's good to be with you. For folks that maybe just moved into the area, let's do our drill and just in a few seconds tell me what the food bank does, what area you serve. Well, Second Harvest Food Bank is the only food bank in our region serving the 18 counties of Northwest North Carolina, from Boone to Burlington, down to Statesville to the Virginia line, addressing food insecurity as well as its root causes. Absolutely. Now, last time you were here, we talked about the new facility where you've consolidated everything. It's a huge facility. It's a great facility. But let me backtrack just a quick second, and then we'll move on. Um, what kind of impact is the, the expanded facility uh, having on the community? Well, one of the great things about the facility, it was designed to bring the community in. So uh, almost every day there's a different group utilizing the facility, it, it, businesses, but mainly nonprofit groups as well as we're having community events there. And we really want to have it as a gathering space. You know, in the triad, it's tough to find good space to have people get together. Right. And now we are one of those uh, opportunities for groups. And then people can see the operation of the food bank while they're there and really learn and appreciate what you do because you, you help a lot of agencies help people. As we remind people, you don't go directly to the food bank for food. Those are distributed through member organizations. Now, uh, let's also backtrack on one quick thing about the pandemic. We've talked before about how bad the hunger problem was during the pandemic. Now we're sort of coming out of the pandemic. Is it different? Is it better? Is it worse? It's, it's a tremendously challenging environment. And it's pretty simple because there were so many supports during the pandemic that uh, folks had, you know, People got additional uh, direct checks from the government. There was additional SNAP or food stamp benefits and other things happening. All that is gone. So what we're seeing is a tremendous rise in people seeking assistance. If we just go back uh, a, a year from now or a previous year and look at where we are today, we're seeing a 27% jump in requests for services. Wow. And uh, the food sourcing environment remains a tremendous challenge. So we're trying to do the best that we can with the resources we have, but the need is higher than even we saw during much of the pandemic. And a lot of folks know food bank by one thing, and that is, hey, I've just been to the grocery store and I've you know, donated some canned goods. And that's great, and you want people to do that. But since you just mentioned the, the, you know, the resources thing, you will also accept donations of money, right? We absolutely do. And that's and it, so you can purchase? Yeah, we have tremendous buying power. Uh, this year alone, we'll probably spend about $2.5 million in purchasing food uh, as we probably look to distribute over 40 million pounds of food to our neighbors facing challenges in the entire region. So dollars or food, um, you know, it's whatever someone is called to do. They both make a big difference, but we really stretch those dollars out when we receive those donations. Right. Now, one thing that folks may not know, too, is that you have, you're engaged in a variety of partnerships and initiatives. Very quickly, we have about 30 seconds left. Tell me, give me some examples. Well, most powerfully is our partner agencies. Over 515 programs we support in the region, but also our culinary training program. It's a great collaboration with Goodwill Industries and Forsyth Tech Community College. Uh, also, our nutrition work, working with all the area medical centers uh, to get food out, but also figuring out great ways to make Make sure we can educate people on the wise ways to use food for their health. Good nutrition, very important, especially for the little kids too. That's absolutely right. Well, I just appreciate all you do for the community, Eric, and, and I can't wait to see you come back again. I know you're busy, so we're always glad we can grab you and get you over here, but thanks for doing this. It's always great. I to want to here. put up on screen, Second Harvest, nwnc.org is the website, Second Harvest, nwnc.org. Please check that out. We'll be right back after this. Need help buying food? Everyone needs help sometimes. 
Food and Nutrition Services may be able to help you buy food and free up your money for other expenses, such as utilities and medicine. To receive FNS assistance, households must meet income limits. You may be able to get assistance even if you own a home, car, land, property, or have a retirement plan or money in the bank. Second Harvest Food Bank of Northwest North Carolina team members can help you with the application process over the phone. To receive help or if you have any questions, call 336-422-7758. Hi, I'm Jim Longworth reminding you that Try It Today is now streaming on WFMY Plus, available free on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. Are you looking to jumpstart your future in the fast-paced, rapidly growing food and hospitality industry? In Second Harvest Food Bank's Providence Culinary and Hospitality programs, you will have the opportunity to do just that. From baking to barista training, an exciting future awaits you. Our programs have helped hundreds of individuals just like you excel in the workplace. There's no reason to wait to turn your passion for food and service into an exciting career. Check out the upcoming class schedule on our website at providencews.org. learn Back now on Try Today, let's talk about urgent care. And we do it with an expert in that field. He's a first time visitor to the show. We welcome Matthew Green. He's a physician assistant with Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist Urgent Care Kernersville facility. Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Jim. By way of King and Wingate and all those great places, and we're glad you're here. What types of conditions, generally speaking, can be treated at urgent care? We can see quite a few conditions, Jim. We can see anything from what we see more in the winter to pink eye, to ear infection, strep throat, respiratory illnesses, um, to simple injuries, simple lacerations, um, and kind of more common urgent conditions. Right. Um, there are some conditions like chest pain, shortness of breath, severe reaction, stroke-like symptoms that could be seen that would be seen more in the emergency room. But we can see a lot of more common urgent care conditions. So if somebody came in with severe chest pains and thought they were in the right place, you might say, hey, look, we need to get you to the to the ER type of thing. We would do our best to assess them and kind of get everything that we needed that we could do from our standpoint. Right. And then get into a higher level of care as soon as possible. Going Circling back to the first question, though, about things that you can treat uh, at urgent care, are there more common conditions that you see in the spring going into summer that, I mean, are there sort of seasonal things you see more of? That's a great question. So we've definitely seen more allergies as it's getting warmer. As people start to play outside more, we're seeing more injuries more sprains and fractures and cuts. Um, we're also seeing, I've actually seen a couple more tick bites recently, so make sure you're checking yourself and your kids. That's um, nothing to play kids. around with. It is not. Lyme disease, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever um, can be very serious, so make sure you're checking yourself and your kids. And we've also kind of entered spring sports. Um, so some of our urgent cares offer um, sports physicals, some do not. So make sure you're checking with your specific urgent care to see what they offer. Now, obviously, if you've had a severe you know, ankle sprain or break or certain things, we know about that. But what, what if they're just in general, what kind of symptoms would I have with other things? Maybe I think it's a cold or a flu. Maybe I think it's something else before I know I should go to urgent care. What kind of signs and symptoms of things would I have? Well, we can treat, so anytime that you feel like you need medical care, anytime you feel like you're unwell and would like to be seen by a provider, we're happy to see you. Okay. Now, when I come to urgent care, because a lot of people's reference, frame of reference is an emergency room at a big hospital. Uh, what, what do I expect to see and do and hear? What, what's it going to be like if I've never been to an urgent care before once I walk in? So you'll be greeted with our front desk staff. Um, we all work well as a team from our front desk staff to our nursing staff, to our medics, to our x-ray technicians, to our providers. Um, we will do our best to see you as conveniently and urgently and safely as possible. So right. you'll be checked in, um, getting all your information. You'll be put in our waiting rooms. Um, and as soon as we can see you, you'll be assessed by our nursing staff and then a provider. All right. Now, I, I do want to mention that as in the introduction, I said with the Kernersville Urgent Care, you guys have urgent cares all over the place. We We're going to give a website in just a second so people can go in that portal and find out. But I want to ask you things since you're a first time visitor. Uh, you know, I know about some of your background, but what led you to want to have a career in medicine and healthcare? Was a family member a doctor or a nurse or what? Um, I've always been led to just want to help people. And then being at Wingate um, is a very big medical kind of background. They have different kind of all different kinds of medical pharmacy, PA schools. Um, so it was a desire to help people and then healthcare kind of just 
led me to that opportunity. Well, I think it's great. I think what you're, you're doing is great and helping a lot of folks. And uh, and they'll see a familiar face then if they go to the, the Kernersville Urgent Care. Up on screen, as I promised, let's show you this, wakehealth.edu. I think you can also call, and correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, I think there's a general number, 713-5116 over at your place. Okay. That yes. you can call. And wakehealth.edu slash urgent care. Urgent care, slash urgent care. And that will get you more directly, but you can get it to all the, get through those portals. Hey, Matt, will you come back sometime? Absolutely. I'd love to. All right. Stay healthy. All right. We'll be right back after this. You know, it's hard to believe the Safe Sober program has been going strong for over 30 years. And over 600,000 students have made the pledge to stay safe and sober on prom night. You know, Griff, it's had a huge impact on our community. Yeah, you're right, David. And now we're making sure the message continues year-round so everyone can join us in supporting our students. Learn more and take the pledge at safesober.com, sponsored by Daggett Schuler. Back now on Try Today, uh, we don't talk about sports too much on this show, but we're going to talk about eSports. I want to learn what that's all about. And we have an expert in the field with me to win. He's a recruiter and esports coach at GTCC. Good to see you. Good to meet you, Jim. What is, uh, let's just get it out of the way. What is esports for somebody who doesn't know? Yeah, esports is high level competition for uh, many different titles uh, of video games. So these teams compete at a very high level of pressure, decision making, and reacting to your opponents. And there is always a match where it'd be 5v5, 1v1, 3v3, depending on team size and title. So the, you have to look through it kind of a traditional sports lens, but there are individuals who can't participate in traditional sports, right? So they, they have the hunger for this win, for this victory, the same sportsmanship kind of feelings that they get in those things. And right. They, so they turn to eSports for that. Solution. Well, tell me about the uh, GTCC eSports team specifically. What's that all about? So we have 34 athletes right now. Uh, students are considered student athletes as long as they're comp competing at my tier one level uh, under a national governance. And so as they go through, they learn a lot of soft skills. They develop just like you would with what you view as a traditional team. So for these individuals, they gain all these skills while getting opportunities to also compete at a university level where they transfer or just a good time in college to help them prepare their, for their jobs. Being able to talk is probably one of the biggest things that they learn how to do effectively. Well, now, who, who can join the team? Are there tryouts? I mean, what, how does that happen? Yep. So there, for my highest level teams, there are tryouts. There are a lot of barriers that you have to navigate. So I need to have an interview with you. I need to just discuss, you know, what are your goals here? What do you gain, gain from the team? What are you hoping to bring to the team? Afterwards, we'll do tryouts to understand their mechanics. So it's similar to fundamentals, right? You got to do certain drills. You have to learn how to do certain things with your mouse and keyboard that I assess. Yeah, there's a lot of hand-eye coordination, a lot of brain power in there. I, I, it's, it's amazing. I mean, now, who do you guys, who does GTCC compete against? Multiple places in the nation. So NGCAA-E is the national governance for it. So I've competed against Missouri State, Missouri, um, Mississippi State, many private institutions. Northern Virginia Community College is a big name. So, uh, and some places in the Midwest as well, in parts of Canada. I think it was our good friend Aaron who, McCloskey who sent me an email one day quoting you in which you said, that, and correct me if I'm wrong, you said something like, esports is more than just playing video games. So I guess my question to you is, what kind of skills do you help people develop within this world of esports and are they transferable? 100% transferable. Being able to be part of a tight-knit team, accomplishing goals that you know, in a regular job, you're going to be attached to people that you may not like, but you need to learn to navigate a problem together and really find a solution and communicate and put all aside other than the idea of what we need to accomplish. Right. That's a pretty critical skill that even some adults have a, you know, don't have. So we would want to be able to bring this to our students. Why did you get interested in, in this? I mean, were you a little kid and, and started developing interest in it or what? So... I would say that I am a result of esports. I have done major leadership uh, opportunities between the private sector, public sector, and military service. Being able to navigate all those difficulties and obstacles comes from a very young development of leadership and problem solving that I did throughout high school, throughout college, as I did esports and led teams, coached people, and everything like that. So, right. giving that to students in these future generations is something I want to give them: is to also become a product of esports and a very competitive 
uh, person in the fields. I tell you what, I just admire what you're doing. It's a very admirable thing. Oh, let me, I don't forget to mention this. Website, gtcc.edu is the main website. You can check out, go through the portal and find out information about that. And uh, two, I appreciate, again, everything you're doing. Now, can can like a 70-year-old guy join an E-team uh, sports team? Actually, you can if you uh, go to school part-time. There's like an intramurals level to get exposed. We actually do have some individuals that are you may be surprised at how, um, how much older they are than the other students. All right. All right, except I don't have any skill level at, at anything. Two, th will you come back sometime? I would love to. All Thank right, you. good luck with the teams. We'll be right back after this. Let GPCC help you take your next career step. Guilford Technical Community College. Make amazing happen. Hi, I'm Jim Longworth, reminding you to catch my column, Longworth at Large, and Yes Weekly every week. It's available throughout the triad, or you can go online, yesweekly.com. When storms hit, we're here for you. With new grid technology that can reroute power to avoid outages, and better communication to keep you in the know. And as we transition to a cleaner energy future, we'll still be here for you, keeping your costs down, even as we work to expand renewables and explore new energy sources. We're Duke Energy, and we're building a smarter energy future for you. Back now on Try Today, and it's time to spend some time with Mr. Theater. That's all I'm going to call him. We're not even going to have to give him a name. Dave Riggs, director of High Point Theater. Welcome back, sir. Thanks, Jim. Uh, we want to mention some upcoming shows that are really exciting. I know people want to go to them. They want to get tickets. But I want to take the first couple of minutes to do something. It dawned on me the other night that on all the years we've been together, I've never asked you on air any personal stuff. So here we go. Where were you born? Uh, Columbus, Ohio. Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> now, is that where you went to school and then went to college near yeah, there? I went, or to, what? went to high school in, in, a, in a little community called Worthington, just north of Columbus. I went to Muskingum College, did my undergraduate work. It's um, in the eastern eastern side of Ohio. And then I did some graduate work at Pittsburgh State University in Kansas. And um, Was this all, I mean, did you take like theater type courses? I mean, yeah, what, yeah. what got you interested in, in eventually you end up being the director of a huge sure. theater and operation? How did that well, I, I went to college thinking I was going to be a minister, believe it or not. And then uh, um, I really love theater. I was a speech, communication, and theater major and, and got my teaching certification. And I taught for four years as well. And then when I went out to Kansas for my graduate program, that was in, in organizational communication. And I learned, man, I mean, I like teaching, but I think there's another path for me somewhere down the road. Uh, and what I'm doing now really is a combination of all of those skills. All the things you love, been too. Brought together and all the things that I love. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. And folks at home don't know, you, uh, this guy, you ought to see him behind the scenes, the things he does to get all the great talent in there. Speaking of that, let's talk about some great talent. Now, we've talked about this ever since the pandemic because it kept getting moved because of the pandemic and other things. Ben Vereen, and it's gonna, actually, if you're watching Saturday morning, try it today, the performance is at 7.30 tonight. April 1st. If you're watching tomorrow, you missed it. But anyway, let's mention Ben Vereen. Yeah, that's right. Ben Vereen, uh, Tony Award winning, Emmy nominated, NAACP Award, uh, North Carolina or uh, National Black Theater Award winning performer. This is your chance to see this American icon in person. And, uh, you know, these are our, our Classic performers are aging out. They really are. And he's he one of the amazing. greats. He really like, is. like Sammy Davis Jr., like Mickey Sammy. Rooney, like people who could do it all. Uh, Barbara Liker is coming. Barbara Lyka is coming April 14th. That's on a Friday, 7:30 p.m. at Showtime. Uh, what's Barbara Lyka all about? Barbara is a sassy, fun jazz performer. She won the Sarah Vaughan Award. And she's been nominated for a couple of Juno's award, Juno Awards in Canada. Uh, an amazing young singer-songwriter in the jazz vein. Um, if you don't see her now, you may not be able to afford to see her later. Wow. I just think she's outstanding. And um, great voice, wonderful stage presence. And she's, just a, she's just a lovely gal. And again, as I mentioned, Barbara Like is Friday, April 14th, 7.30 p.m. And then I want to uh, get another plug in for Stunt Dogs. We mentioned this uh, briefly one day. <laughs> Stunt Dog, Saturday, April 15th, tax day, uh-oh, yeah, 2 p.m., so that's an afternoon. Uh, it's, it's a 2 o'clock and a 7.30, two oh, shows. Oh, they're doing two shows. Two shows that, that day. Now, what, what is Stunt Dogs stunt about? Stunt Dogs are, are rescue animals 
who have been trained to perform. Chris Perandi has put on this great show. They were on America's Got Talent. Uh, we've got a clip um, that we're going to show, I think. Yeah. For, it's a 30 I, I don't clip. know if we're going to show it right now or maybe we're showed it before. We're going to show it before, Sherry, or right after, but we're going to show it one yeah. way. The people are going to see it. So, yeah, go ahead. But they're just so much fun. And if you love animals and, and it's, you're going to have a smile on your face, I guarantee you, when you walk out the door. I have a smile on my face when you walk in. Oh, That's you're kind. I don't know why that is. <laughs> Up on screen, uh, highpointtheater.com is the website. And as I've said before, one of my favorite websites ever because it gives you all detailed information about everything coming up uh, in the future, too. And for tickets, though, the best way to do that is call 336-887-3001. That's the best way, the most efficient way. Save a little money that way. That's where you get your tickets. And uh, thanks for telling me about your background. And Welcome. now looking ahead, you're going to stay over for the round table? I sure will. Thank you, Dave. Dave Briggs, High Point Theater. Go see those shows. We'll be right back after this. Just another doggo day. Chris Parandi's Stunt Dog Experience. Featuring Did they just the say stunt dogs? dogs on planet Earth. Time to train. Come on, Dale. Let's go get a checkup. Please say I can be a stunt dog. Please say I can be a stunt dog. Well, Dale, you appear to be in tip-top shape. You should try out to be a stunt dog. Stunt dogs, here I come. Every cookie sold in the Girl Scout cookie program helps girls learn lifelong lessons in people skills, decision-making, money management, goal-setting, and business ethics. It's amazing how much you can learn from a cookie. The Girl Scout Cookie Program. Think outside the box. Back now on Try Today, just about time for the round table, but a quick shout out to the good folks here at Cena Botanical Garden. You can check out the website, check out the garden, lots to see here. It's a beautiful place. You can rent the facility and have functions here. And you can't rent the round table, though, but they don't function half the time anyway. Now, <laughs> on my right, but always a political left. You like that, didn't you? No, I, I do like my, that. Uh, well. Ogie Overman, great broadcaster journalist. Dave Briggs, we held over from the last segment about High Point Theater. Keith Granberry, founder of Helping Hands Consultants. Guys. We've talked about these things before, but let's let's go over this. State lawmakers may pass the bill for medical marijuana to be legal. But if they do, here's the big question. Should Medicare cover pot in that situ in that situation, Ogie? Oh, absolutely, 100%. They've got to. They absolutely got to. They break. Yeah, I think so. I think that's going to have to be part of the deal. Key? Yes, absolutely. I think they have to do that if they, if they if they pass and then if it's a medical reason, absolutely. Because across the country, so many elderly folks are using medical marijuana anyway, but it's not covered. Not just elderly either, you know. Yeah, right. A lot of people yeah, are Keith, sick nowadays. Keith used, never mind. <laughs> the, uh, the, the North Carolina Senate has proposed a bill that would require, require middle school students to develop a career plan if they want to go to the eighth grade, okay? Now, the state superintendent says the career plan would help students prepare for what comes after high school. Good idea, bad idea, weird idea, Ogie. Weird. Just absurd, basically. I mean, what seventh grade? I didn't know what I was going to do until I was 40 years old. <laughs> I mean, come on. They don't know what they're going to do after the weekend. Dave Briggs? Yeah, I think it's a really nice thought. But I wanted to be a football player when I was in eighth grade. That didn't turn out all well. Right. So <laughs> Keith, you wanted to be a fashion model. I, I am a yeah, fashion model. Kind of, <laughs> it came true. Do you, yeah. uh, you think a seventh grader should be forced to do a career plan if he wants to go to the eighth grade? Well, you know, in China, they do that. They separate people from uh, young people, and they decide what their careers are going to be early on, and they start uh, grooming them for that. I don't think there's anything wrong with getting p young people mind that way, but I don't know about uh, mandating that to go to the eighth grade. Though. All right, Congress, uh, speaking of young people, uh, Congress is moving closer to banning TikTok because of potential national security risk posed by the Chinese uh, company, but also because misinformation and what they call deep fake photos are harming kids, is what they say. Guys, 150 million people use TikTok. You think it should be banned entirely? Ogie. Well, that's tough, Jim. I, 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 you know, I'm not tech savvy enough to know what to do about TikTok. I mean, so many people are on it. 
but there's got to be some kind of regulation. I mean, why couldn't another company be formed in the U.S. Take over. that would emulate TikTok? Dave. Yeah, I'm not sure how you ban it. Now, I, I, as a municipal employee, I don't have TikTok on any of my devices. Right. And uh, none of the, none of my employees do either. Yeah. I, I just don't know how to you ban it for 150 Keith, million ban people. TikTok. No, but uh, I think what I don't know if you ban TikTok, but I think they should be looking at how how they look at the people who had the insurrection. I mean, that's a little bit more important. Than right. Uh, each year, the North Carolina General Assembly allocates over twice as much money per student for NC State University folks as it does for North Carolina A&T students. Now that Chancellor Martin has called attention to this horrible discrepancy, do you think state lawmakers will move to close the funding gap anytime soon, or will it just be the status quo, Ogie? Jim, do they do it uh, based on number of students well it's also it, partially but it's also you know research grants you know uh, things that some of the ancillary things they can base it on which is legitimate yeah, but still yeah i think they ought to close that gap quite a bit they break i think they need to close that gap immediately it's long overdue Keith, okay. this is nothing new all of the hbcus have been uh, short change and I think they need to look at that and examine not only a t which is one of the greatest universities in the country but other HBCUs that are that are utilizing these great students and they're not getting enough funds yeah. absolutely and a and is putting uh, other major universities to shame with technology and that kind of thing too so interesting all right Forsyth County legislators have proposed a bill for Scythe County legislators now proposed a bill that would remove Smith Reynolds Airport from the Winston-Salem tax rolls and claim it for the county. They say the airport shouldn't have to pay both city and county taxes. Most airports don't. Mayor Joyne said that would cost the city a half million dollars in revenue each year. How do you stand on this, Ogie? I'm with Joyne's on that one. I, I think the county is just a, a money grab. That's all it is. Dave. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm with the, with the mayor. I don't understand why the county now is deciding that they want to um, re-annex a, a piece of property that was originally Winston-Salem. What do you think, Keith? Is it in Winston-Salem? It's in it Winston-Salem. In, in but, but that's in the county, too. Okay, but does, is it outside of the city limits of Winston-Salem? No. Then, then Mayor Jones has a, has All a right. beef. Speaking of Forsyth County, a new smoking ban is now in place for areas just outside the Department of Health building. Not inside, outside. In general, do you agree with a smoking ban anywhere where you can't smoke outside? Quickly, over. I hate to say it, Jim, but I, I, I side with the old poor old smoker on that one. All right. Doors. There, there's already a rule that you can't smoke within 20 feet of, a, of an entrance, right. any a public entrance. Quickly, Keith. I don't agree with that. All right. Finally, guys, the Hershey Company is now selling vegan candy, who, including Reese's peanut butter cups, in which the chocolate is made with plants instead of milk. Guys, are you planning to eat any plant-based candy? Okay. I'm not planning on it, but I might try it one time just out of curiosity. I might, yeah, yeah I'd, I'd try it. Uh, that doesn't mean that that's what I'll go to all the time. Keith, you like sweet things. I, I don't know how to take what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you mean, man. Are you want to talk about candy or what? What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. You know, sometimes I don't know why I even... Why even bother? All right. Well, that's all the uh, that's all the time. The answer we have. is no, no. Yeah, well, oh, except for this. We, uh, time's out. Except for this. Oh, there were two prisoners in Newport News, Virginia, who just last week escaped the jail. They tunneled out from the jail and they went straight for IHOP to have breakfast and asked what the ordeal was like. One of the prisoners said it was a horrible experience and prison was bad too. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm kidding, IHOP. I love IHOP. If I ever get out of prison, I'm going to IHOP. All right, for all of us here, try it today. I'm Jim Longworth. We'll see you next week.